You know, I've made a fun bit out of talking about the good bits of the 2010s on the bad list, and the bad bits of the 2010s on the good list, and the bad bits of the 2000s on the good list, and now I may have hit a bit of a snag. As someone who grew up in the 2000s, I ain't got a lot of good to say about it. The people that populated the internet at that point didn't have a lot of shame, what can I say? But for the sake of committing to the bit, Luke and I like new metal. The sixth generation of gaming was pretty rad. Catwoman 2004 is a cinematic masterpiece. Anyway, while WWE certainly did have a fair share of great pay-per-views during the 2000s, the depths in which they fell in the new millennium were truly diabolical. I don't think it is possible for WWE to ever have a pay-per-view as horrendous as some of these shows, and let me say right now, I'm very excited to talk about them. I'm Tempest Hailing from Parts of Unknown, and this is the worst WWE pay-per-view from every year of the 2000s. But before we get on with this list, make sure, of course, that you like this video, subscribe and enable notifications to always on so you never miss a list just like it, like last week's list, where we did the best version of this list. If you want a little bit more positivity in your life. 2000, King of the Ring. It really isn't difficult to see why the King of the Ring pay-per-view was kicked to the curb. Honestly, it's a wonder it didn't happen earlier with shows like this. 2000 might be the best calendar year in WWE history, so it's a bit shocking that they were still able to put on a show as utterly trash as this. 11 matches, and the only one that would put a mild grin on someone's face was Kurt Angle versus Chris Jericho. The other 10, nah, uh. The tournament itself is mostly a bunch of sub five minute matches. The main event is Triple H dropping the title to The Rock in a six man tag, meaning he could lose the title without getting pinned. He can't f***ing fool me. Put the top baby face over, you big baby. And of course, the cherry on top of this Sunday is the evening gown match between Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe, which decidedly earned its place on our worst match ever series. A series that is returning right here on Parts Fun Known this Friday. Major excitement, set your watches. 2001, Invasion. Oh, Invasion. Perhaps the single greatest WWE pay-per-view of all time at embodying missed opportunity. We all know the reputation that this pay-per-view accrued pretty much the moment it ended. More people bought this pay-per-view than any other non WrestleMania pay-per-view thinking they would see Goldberg and Sting and Buff Bagwell's mom, but went to bed that night full of disappointment. But how was the pay-per-view itself? Well, not gonna lie, it was well sh There was a classic RVD versus Jeff Hardy hardcore match, but otherwise, there is not a lot to like here. I mean, take your pick of this card, Lita and Trish versus Stacy and Tori in a bra and panties match, or Earl Hebner versus Nick Patrick, or the all-star trios match of Canyon, Stasiak, and Humorous versus Albert, Billy Gunn, and Big Show. The finale has more main event star power, at least on the WWF side, but ends with the utter nonsense of Steve Austin Austin joining the Alliance, which, as we all know, just don't make no sense. 2002, King of the Ring. Now for the show that actually did kill the King of the Ring pay-per-view after a mostly terrible decade-long run. This show starts with a really good first-round match with RVD beating Y2J, which goes to show just how well-regarded Jericho was backstage just a couple months after his undisputed title run, and then not a single other thing of substance for two and a half hours. Brock Lesnar may have used the King of the Ring win to go straight to the main event, good for him, but this was not a good tournament, and it took up half the show. Elsewhere, you had old-timers way past their expiry date, having bad matches with some of the best wrestlers of the era, with Hulk Hogan stinking out the joint against Kurt Angle, and Flair doing the same with Eddie Guerrero. And then, only by the grace of God did this show end, but not before the worst version of The Undertaker defended the undisputed title against merely one of the worst versions of Triple H for 24 pissing minutes. How? These two men are the same humans that stole the show at back-to-back -back WrestleManias a decade later? I will never understand. 2003, Backlash. It has not been nearly enough time since I talked about Backlash 2003 in our WrestleMania follow-up pay-per-views list to have this god forsaken show come up again. It could be two years from now and it would still be too soon. This show is such a blight upon the wrestling world. Big show murderizing poor Rey Mysterio. The 2002 fake ass NWO lineup taking on Triple H, Ric Flair, and Chris Jericho. A Goldberg exposing main event. I don't know if there has ever been a bigger gap in quality between two consecutive pay-per-views than there were here with the excellent WrestleMania 19 and then this. The average star rating on this show is below 1.5. And if you take out the Los Guerreros tag, the only good match on the show, it's just one. 
I don't care how much stock you put into Uncle Dave's star ratings, that is very bad. The last time we saw a pay-per-view put up numbers like this, it was Super Showdown 2020, the Goldberg Fiend Show. Not good company, I must say. And speaking of, 2004, Great American Bash. There are a number of top contenders for the title of worst WWE pay-per-view of all time, but one that does not get the consideration it deserves is the Great American Bash 2004. Maybe this show was booked as a shot at Dusty Rhodes, bringing back the classic WCW show with an all-time horrible lineup, because I simply do not think that someone could book a show this horrible by accident. This had to be the plan. I mean, just look at this card. Luther Reigns versus Charlie Haas, Kenzo Suzuki, versus Billy Gunn, Hardcore Holly versus Mordecai. These matches wouldn't be fit for SmackDown. These are velocity matches on pay-per-view. And if you thought the main event scene would make up for it, <laughs> you stupid bitch, you little silly Billy, you. Eddie Guerrero loses the WWE Championship playing Red Light, Green Light. And if that weren't bad enough, he loses Red Light, Green Light on a technicality. Then The Undertaker murders his manager after wrestling a horrible match trying to save him. Avoid this show, avoid it at all costs. Much like 2005, The Great American Bash. Okay, maybe one bad pay-per-view can be forgiven, but to bring Great American Bash back from the dead only to put on the worst show of the year, not once, not thrice, but twice, has to have malicious intent behind it. I'm surprised they didn't do it with Halloween Havoc and Bash at the Beach too. With the lone exception of Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio daring to have a good match on this show, continuing the battle over Baby Dom, there ain't a saving grace in sight at the Bash. The card isn't quite as dire this time around, but that just means the end result is so much more disappointing. Booker T and Christian is uninspired, Orlando Jordan joins the exclusive club of people unable to have a good match with Chris Benoit, the main event of JBL, and Batista goes 20 minutes and ends in DQ because of course it does. We have to see this pissing match again next month. And also, yeah, some of this card is just dire too. The BWO versus the Mexicools, anyone? Road Warrior Heidenreich? Anyone? Anyone? And who could forget that this was the end of poor Muhammad Hassan as he met his fate in the form of an Undertaker squash. What was so great and American about this bash anyway? Nothing. 2006, December to dismember. All right, bang, straight in there. No deliberation needed here. In the year tied for having the most pay-per-views, there is no question about which one is the worst one. And there was still some stiff competition, let me tell you. This was a bad year for WWE. Across their 16 pay-per-views, the average star rating across the year was two. But with all that in mind, December to Dismember is the worst WWE show of all time. There is no escaping it. And if I was in the building that night in Augusta, I would have tried. Who was this for? What fan bought this show and gave it a thumbs up? ECW fans hated it. Raw fans hated it. SmackDown fans hated it. TNA fans hated it. It wasn't even funny enough for lovers of wrestling to not hate it. It was just the vampires and Mike Knox, the teachers and Balls Mahoney, Tommy Dreamer taking the dumbest bump of his career on the worst show of his career. Wrap it all up in an extreme elimination chamber bow and you have a wrestling masterpiece of sh Excellent timing. Just finished. Uh, I was in between entries. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in the edit. <laughs> Just Ollie going. <laughs> <laughs> He's still going. 2007, Unforgiven. Dear Lord, they aren't getting any better. Unforgiven is an appropriate name for this pay-per-view because Christ, this show is unforgivable. It's got the worst John Cena, Randy Orton match on it and think of the ground that covers. Cena gets DQ'd seven minutes in for kicking too much ass, Luke Owen's favorite finish in the world, all to set up a match the next month that doesn't happen because Cena gets hurt. Sorry you spent 40 smackers on this show hoping to see the end of a story. The only match on this whole show that you could say was even close to being good is the Rednecks versus the Stoners. And although I'm sure you would assume this would get the most heat of anything on the show, I can assure you it didn't. The miserable world title reign of the Great Khali came to an end finally, which was cause for celebration, but still not a good match. Triple H decided to remind everyone that Carlito was not going to be a thing, and then The Undertaker returned from injury for the worst main event of the year against Mark Henry. 2007 actually has a bunch of good pay-per-views, way more than 2006, so it is shocking that this one was as unforgivably bad as it was. 
2008 Survivor Series. I make it no secret that 2008 was the first year of wrestling that I witnessed, and I watched a ton of the pay-per-views from that year, so when I tell you that I can vividly remember Survivor Series 2008 being the first time I ever got bored out of my skull watching a pay-per-view, you know I'm telling the truth. This show goes from a nothing happening elimination match to a nothing happening divas elimination match to a dog casket match between The Undertaker and the newly revealed casket foe, Big Show, back to a nothing happening elimination match that admittedly was the best match of the night, but for f**k's sake, when it's the third one in a run of four matches, I think I've had my fill. It's just a tedious show, there's no other way to put it. None of these elimination matches are interesting. Survivor Series matches inherently are not interesting and need to be made interesting through good storytelling. And that was just not present at this year's fall spectacle. And I haven't even gotten to Jeff Hardy being falsely advertised and then pulled from the WWE title match, leading not only to pissed off customers who absolutely did not pay to watch Triple H lay on the mat with Vladimir Kozlov for 12 minutes, but also that being the worst match of the year. I want my money back. I don't care if it's been 16 years. 2009, The Bash. For as trash, horrible, poo-poo garbage as Raw was as a television show in 2009, SmackDown and the pay-per-views made up for it. So we get to end this list on a more positive note. Hooray. Because while The Bash should absolutely not be classified as a good show by any stretch of the imagination, you won't find a pay-per-view in 2009 without at least one very good Good to great match. The Bash's representative in that regard is one of my favorite matches of all time, as it turns out, with Rey Mysterio taking the IC title back from Chris Jericho. Fantastic scenes, go watch it, but when you do, make sure you shut off the rest of the show because hoo 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 fa. John Cena beats The Miz in a match so terrible, WWE decided to have it main event WrestleMania. Jeff Hardy and CM Punk's world title match ended in a lame DQ. Dolph Ziggler made his pay per view singles debut against the great Khali, just the way every young star would like. And Triple H and Randy Orton finally put their horribly boring 2009 rivalry to bed with an equally boring 22 minute three stages of hell match in the main event. There's even a championship scramble match on this show. Remember those? No? Keep it that way. And that's our list. Make sure, of course, that you like this video. And if you did, watch this clip from last week's counterpart to it and make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up. It actually does help. I know I ask every week, but give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I, I love you. I'm going to go have a drink. Love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. The way, as the first 15 months of the decade were maybe the best the company had literally ever had, but after the fall of WCW and the end of the Attitude Era, the company got the F out, and with it went a significant amount of the interest the general public had in wrestling. Which is a shame, because all those folks who departed the wrestling fandom had to miss out on seeing fine pay-per-views like these.